What's up, Mortgage Coach community? Dave Savage doing a mortgage strategy interview with Auntie Andy Dotrick, uh, about an hour outside of Philly uh, in Pennsylvania. How you doing, my friend? I'm well. I'm well. Good. Well, Andy, you uh, you you've clearly gone to the next level with Mortgage Coach. You're you're a little bit past brown belt. I know you've been using Mortgage Coach for a little less than a year, but coming up on a year. And then um, I know you've also taken your production to another level. So could you tell everybody a little bit about your mortgage practice, what market you're in, uh, where you're at today, and then where you plan to, where you're going next year? Yeah, sure. So um, thanks for having me on, Dave. Uh, big fan of your your videos, by the way. I, I try to watch every single one of them and pick up something from all the different people that you interview. Um, so I've been in, been in the mortgage business for going on about 24 years. Uh, I've been with the same company for almost 20. Uh, last year, February of 2020, I made the switch over to Centennial Lending Group, uh, just based on the technology that they offered and some of the wonderful things that they could do for me that I didn't have at my last company. Shortly after coming on board, they introduced this concept of mortgage coach and total cost analysis and gave us a brief presentation, uh, promised us that we'd be up and running by the end of the year. And of course, the rest is history. I, I had it in my hands, I'd say by middle of fall, maybe right before the holidays. And uh, it's been foot on the gas pedal ever since. Love it. Love it. Hey, you know, your camera went up a little bit. Could you move it down a little bit just so there's a little less... There you go. Yeah, that's the way it was a minute ago. And then I think it there you go. Fun. How's that? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. You sound great. Great. So, so I guess why why did you adopt Mortgage Coach? Because you know, there's companies that roll out Mortgage Coach, and some loan officers are quick to it. It looks like you became yeah. a or brown belt as quickly as you could. What was your why? Um, my why was. From a technology standpoint, I love the concept of, of being able to put something uh, into a report that a, that a client could uh, digest with their eyes, so to speak. Um, and, you know, as, as I get older and my clients continue to get younger, I need to be able to match their expectations in terms of the technology that I have available. Um, Mortgage Coach allows me to take some information from a potential borrower or a, or a client that's already in the pipeline and be able to show them things very quickly and concisely and help them make a decision. Um, and they appreciate that because it, it takes it away from the black and white spreadsheet uh, and the, the, uh, the, the verbal uh, verification that I try to instill in them through, through sales and puts it in terms that they can understand and helps them make a good decision that is also very interactive and we can make changes to throughout the whole process. Well, it, it, I think you're closing over 150 loans a year right now. Is that right? Uh, you know, it's, my boss would probably make fun of me for this because since I've started, I don't look at a paycheck. Uh, I don't know what production is. I don't know how many units I close. I just come to work every day and grind it out. But if you say so, you probably know more than I do. Well, what, well I guess, what is the goal? What is the next level for you? You know, where you're at right now? Uh, yeah, so... The, the goal is um, I just I just recently my assistant, uh, Samantha, just recently got licensed. And my goal is to be able to bring her up to speed with with total cost analysis as well and help her try to generate some of her own business, but also capitalize on um, allowing her to help me prepare these presentations in advance so that I can do more. Um, I'd, I'd like to see my business go up by 50 percent next year. I have a goals meeting set up at the beginning of December to make sure that's feasible. Um, but with mortgage coach and, and all the referrals that I've been getting from it, I think that's, I think that's fair as long as we stay in the market we're in. Love it. And what, what are you, uh, where are you getting most of your business? What are your primary referral sources? Um, you know, I have a handful of really solid, uh, referral partners that I've been working with for years. And, you know, the old saying, I'd rather have four quarters than, you know, 10 dimes. Um, the, the folks that I work with, we, we've become, we really have become partners uh, and they've become advocates for me and they do such a great job of, of referring their customers to me that when they come, I just make sure that I, you know, I do my best to make sure they don't regret it. And then of course we, we farm our pipeline fairly hard and um, look for referrals from past customers. Um, and that's through, you know, multiple different strategies that we employ. So, you know, just like most successful loan officers, you get, good business from good real estate agents and referral partners. And then you hope to farm that, that past client database for new business. 
How many folks do you have in your past client database? Oh gosh, again, um, my assistant would probably know more than I do, but it's it, it's well over a thousand and you know that's that's in there that we're actively farming at the moment. There's some that fall off, you know, that you just know that they're not responding anymore. So you kind of cut them a break and stop testing them. But the ones that are still active, we we try to we try to stay on top of them. Are you are you doing annual reviews or using mortgage coach to provide proactive reviews for clients? Or are you waiting until they call you and then doing an analysis for them? Well, you know, we're at the moment, we're, we're trying to do as much as we can with our past clients on our own, but we're also in the process of, of with some people at our company that have, uh, you know, a lot more technology background than we do to create an automated process that um, allows us to reach out to them once a year uh, through either a bomb bomb video or some type of social media or an email and, or a text and say, hey, listen, it's it's time to time to do your annual review and make sure your mortgage is performing the way it's supposed to. Let's get 15 minutes scheduled to make sure that you're right on track with your goals. Well, I believe, and I don't know if you're using it, your, your company has total expert and there is an automated mortgage coach review yeah. where, where if you just opt in, mortgage coach will go out um, for the annual anniversary for all your clients. Yeah, we're, we're working on that. Um, I've been lucky enough through uh, the people of my company, and, and I, I'll try to say this without sounding like I'm puffing my own chest out, but I, I think I'm using Mortgage Coach at the moment more than most people of my company. So they've reached out to me for um, some feedback on how I think we could, we could maximize um, you know, that, that product with all the other loan officers. And I, I do believe they're integrating it into Total Expert, but what I've told them was I, I want to be, a, I've had more success with Total Expert when I introduce it to the customer myself, as opposed to just sending it out to them and expecting them to be able to read it and understand it without any type of guidance. Um, so I'm, I'm sure at some point that total expert will be integrated throughout the company. But for me, I've had more luck when I've, when I've taken the opportunity to say to the customer, look, this is a very powerful tool and I want you to understand it, but we have to go through it together at least the first time. So you know what you're looking at. Good. Well, you, you great job. I mean, in my mind, hearing everything that you've done, how you're using technology, how you use a mortgage coach, you you've become a modern mortgage professional in 2021, and you're you're on your way to becoming a black belt. So, uh, first of all, anybody that's watching this live in our Facebook group, if you have questions, put them down below. I'll I'll answer them. Or, or Andy, I'll get Andy to answer them. Uh, let's let's get into some of your most common strategies in the market today to help you convert the leads, whether it sure. came from a partner or a past customer. You know, what what are some of the most common ways you're using mortgage coach and you're delivering this next level experience? Yeah. So the the thing that appealed to me the most and the way that I use mortgage coach to integrate it into every single borrower that I talk to is, you know, and and I'm sure you run into this all the time. One of the first questions that most people think they know what to ask is, what's the interest rate? And, um, you know, you can either handle stalls and objections. You can either be that guy that tries to be the lowest guy on the street. Um, you can be the opposite end of the spectrum where you try to justify why your, your rates are slightly higher. The question I always turn around and ask when someone says, what's the interest rate is, if I could show you how to pick the right interest rate, instead of the lowest interest rate and how that could save you money over the, the life of your mortgage, whatever that length might be, would it be worth 15 minutes of your time? And nobody says no, right? Because now I'm in their head and they're going, wait a minute, you're telling me that the lowest interest rate might cost me more money? And I'm saying, I'm not sure, but if we take this 15 minutes and I'm able to present to you very quickly and in color, based on the information you provide, um, it's going to help you pick the right, not only the right interest rate, but also the right loan product as well. So that's usually how I'll integrate the mortgage coach um, uh, tool into the conversation with the borrower to completely deflect that rate question, which is usually the first thing everybody asks. So, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, when, when I hear of new loan officers that are adopting mortgage coach, that's always a script. Like, how do you position 
the total cost analysis in a way that the consumer sees the value and they're excited when they get it. And so we, we got your, how do you position mortgage coach? Another script that I find that's, that's really valuable and I'd love to hear yours is just your value proposition script. You know, how you like when a lender, and, and I'm not saying a borrower calls you up and says, why you, you know, maybe some do. Um, more times than not, they're like, what's your rate? You know, what's it going to cost? And what's my payment? And do I qualify? You know, very transactional questions. Right. But how do you position yourself as a mortgage coach that might be different than how you position yourself when you are a loan officer? You know, like when you were a loan officer and you gave a fee worksheet, and now that you're a mortgage coach and you're delivering your goals, your strategy, with a strategy, you've got a, you've got a bigger value. Is there anything different you say in terms of how you position yourself now that you're a mortgage coach? Um, yeah. Now the first thing I would probably say is very rarely will I ever deal with somebody who just beats me up over rates and fees for two reasons. Number one, I have very good referral partners and past clients um, that will establish credibility for me before I even speak with my customers. Um, but the second reason is I just won't allow it. Um, the minute that I sniff out that somebody might be looking for the best deal in terms of fees or rates, I'll very politely explain to them that I'm probably not your guy. Um, and that either ends the conversation very quickly, or it allows me to take them down a different road, which is to explain why I'm different. And one of the things that I, again, I stole from your website, um, and forgive me, cause I don't remember the name of the gentleman who, who scripted it, but I loved it so much. I made it part of not only every single total cost analysis that I do, but I also have it at the bottom of my signature on, uh, every email that I send out. And it basically says something like, most lenders will quote you an interest rate within the first three minutes of speaking with you. I'm different because I'm a loan strategist. And there's dozens of variables that go into determining the right loan product for you. And it goes on and on to explain why the, the, the mortgage coach and the total cost analysis is going to help them find value in dealing with me as opposed to you know going online and looking for the lowest interest rate. Because you and I both know, if you want to believe that Bigfoot's real, you ask the question the right way on Google and you'll get the answer you want. Um, so in terms of creating value, I like to let them know that we're going to think outside the box and we're going to come up with something that's perfect for you instead of something that just looks good on paper. I love that. And and, and by the way, that is a uh, a Todd Duncan script. I mean, there, there are a lot of loan officers that have adopted that. I'm going to show it on the screen real quick for folks. Uh, does does this look familiar? Oh my God, I loved it. The minute I saw it, I, I loved it. Yeah. So so guys, and, and we do. I do these interviews to hear what different loan officers are saying and doing to provide you guys with scripts and strategies. So uh, take this, make your make it yours, so that it's it's your script. Uh, a couple other words that I was, I'm wondering if if you resonate with this. Uh, when we do teaching and training around scripting, we always, you know, what we find is that when a loan officer comes to us and they're a white belt, you know, they've been delivering fee worksheets versus mortgage coaches, they're used to scripts like this. Hey, I can close your loans faster than anyone else. I've got great rates. And, and then we teach this whole concept around have a bigger value prop. You know, and, and make sure your value prop includes advice, includes building wealth, making smarter decisions, and then coaching or advising over time to make sure they always have the best rate. Uh, I don't know, did you pull this? This is something that we, we comes up a lot in our community where as a mortgage coach, you're delivering strategies, not just rates and fees. Do you use this at all or have your own version of this? I... I... I do, and, and I can't say that I've used that one verbatim, um, but we will, always, we will always send the message that, um, you know, the, the, lowest, the lowest interest rate will always cost you more if you haven't investigated why it's the best rate for you. Um, but, you know, to an extent, you've put it in a, in a lot less words than, than I tend to use, so I might steal that from you, too. Hey, that's why we do these, so everybody can borrow and be inspired by others. So let's get into a specific mortgage coach. Why don't you uh, pull up a specific 
total sure. cost analysis. Tell us the the borrower yeah. story around it. You know, what was the borrower trying to? When they came to you, what were they trying to accomplish? And then, what did you present to them, and why? Let's see what I got here. And remember, guys, if you've got questions, put them down below. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel and it's not live, still put your questions down below. If there's a big takeaway you got or something you really liked about it, we love hearing what the big takeaway and value was for you. Uh, so cool, you did a nice job of branding it. You got your, you know, your company brand and jersey that you wear. You've got your your personally branded up in the upper right hand corner. So what do we what do we got here? So what we're looking at is uh, some past clients um, from about nine years ago that moved away and um, just recently came back to the area. Um, they are starting to focus in on retirement uh, within the next eight to nine years. So they're a little bit concerned about not only payment going on a fixed income, but also cash to close because they need some reserves. So they had some questions on some different options. Uh, and the first option was, um, you know, strictly the, the, the vanilla generic 20% down, eliminate the MI, um, you know, down payment uh, was going to be roughly $53,000, throw closing costs on top of there. They were going to be about, set, uh, about 65 out of pocket. They were trying to figure out how to minimize that monthly mortgage payment. So what I did with the total cost analysis was I showed them um, an additional scenario of 20% down plus an additional 10,000, which they had, um, and showed them how that would uh, effectively reduce that payment by you know, another 45 bucks. Um, and then I also showed them what would happen if they simply just put the same 20% down, but then bought that interest rate down. Um, and ultimately reduce that payment even lower. So after showing them the different options um, and actually going down to the bottom of the report, which is really kind of the, the icing on the cake, in my opinion, when you get to this part, um, when we looked at where the, the home value might be in 10 years when they're ready to retire and what the equity position might be in their home, and we showed them what the total interest uh, that they would pay over the life of that loan, they actually ended up making a decision, believe it or not, to take the higher interest rate. So they took the higher interest rate with the higher payment, but chose to preserve that $10,000 that they might have put down. And um, they were going to make a decision as to whether or not to um, either just hold that in a, a savings account for a rainy day fund or throw it at their financial planner who could do some you know, crazy things with it and maybe make them seven or 8% a year on their investment. So they came in thinking that what they wanted was the very lowest payment that they could get. And after talking them through what the different options were and presenting them with, with the actual end result, they decided that they'd rather make the slightly higher payment, but have that $10,000 to do other things with. Now, Andy, you, you didn't do it. I don't know if you you know just intentionally left it out or you didn't know about it you could have taken that ten thousand and put it in mortgage coach and and put it at like seven or eight percent do you we, ever do that yeah we did that yeah when you go into analysis and you can reinvest we actually showed them that i just don't have it on this report um okay okay so yeah. you did you did use that feature in the total cost analysis i just Absolutely. didn't see it here. Okay. yeah we yeah we we backed it out and the, the main reason we backed it out was because they these are these were some older folks, um, you know, very kind of black and white in terms of their thinking. So I showed them, I took them into that part of the report, and I said, "Hey, let's play around with a, you know, scenario here. What if we took that ten grand? How much money do you think you could make on it in a year?" And of course, they didn't really know. So I said, "Well, let's let's do five percent." Showed them five percent. Showed them nine percent. Um, and at the end of the, the presentation, you know, they always have that aha moment. Sometimes it happens for people in the beginning and sometimes it happens for them at the very end. But they said, you know what? I think we're comfortable with the slightly higher payment and having that money go to work for us better somewhere else. Yeah, and, and guys, I hope you heard that the aha moment. I mean, that is, that is what the mortgage coach, that's how they're different than the loan officer, is they want to present strategies to achieve goals to get the family, wow, create that aha moment. 
that makes a smarter mortgage decision and makes you a more valuable advisor. So, so great. Any, any other, anything else on this one before we, we do one more strategy? No, but again, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, these folks came in a little nervous about, you know, buying another house, you know, in their upper fifties, early sixties. And when they left, um, you know, they did what everybody said and said, we feel really good about our decision. You know, we would have never been able to figure this, this out on our own. That, that presentation made it very easy. Love it. Uh, so what's the other strategy you want to show or talk about? Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up real quick. So this one was a refinance that I just did recently for, um, I would call them, I would call them friends. Um, I would always tell you this, if you can't do your hair, your wife's hairdressers loan, or you can't do your own barber's loan, you're screwing something up. And this month I did my barber's loan and my wife's hairdressers loan. So if you're getting your haircut somewhere, make sure those are your biggest advocates. Those are the people that are going to get you in front of more people than you could ever get in front of on your own. Right. Love, love that. I totally agree. So um, these folks reached out to me um, through text and said, hey, listen, you know, we think there's an opportunity here for us to uh, refinance our mortgage. So I had them send me their mortgage statements so that I could just plug some quick information in. And it turns out they've been in the house for about eight or nine years, and they were paying 5% on their loan. Um, it was an FHA loan. So they had some mortgage insurance in there and um, they wanted to know if they could refinance. They had been putting additional money on the principal of their loan. So we looked at what would happen if they continued to do that. And then we put a couple different options in place to reduce their loan uh, from a 30 year down to a 15. And when we did that, what we were able to show them was the payment they were making at the moment was two thousand and. $81 a month, but they were throwing an extra 500 bucks a month at it starting about six months ago. Um, we were able to show them some different options based on some different interest rates. And then of course, like I said to you earlier, you know, get it to pass the sniff test at the, at the long-term analysis. And what we found was they were on track to pay about another $80,000 in interest on their existing mortgage. All three of these options made a lot of sense. They're planning on staying in that home, even though their kids are going to be moving out shortly. They don't see a point in moving. Uh, she's self-employed. He's a police officer. And they had very specific goals for where they wanted their mortgage budget to be. So we ended up looking at three different options and it ended up making sense to lock into the lowest interest rate, which, which was just a touch under 2%. They got 1.99. And um, when we looked at what they were going to be paying over the life of the loan, it made sense for them to pay those points. And now there's someone who, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, did get the lowest interest rate and the lowest interest rate did make sense because the likelihood of them having to refinance this loan again, unless they want to tap that equity one more time, is pretty slim. Do, do you ever take that savings on a monthly basis and apply it, show what would happen if you prepaid every month and how much faster you'd pay off your home? Yeah, so what will end up happening is once they've, once they've gone through um, closing, which they just did, and they go into um, total expert. Once they've been shown as a, a closed loan sorted, they'll go into a total expert. And since this report is something that I can go in and manipulate, what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually use this same report. I'll get rid of the options that they didn't choose so they can't see them. And I'll add another option showing what would happen if they took all that money they were saving and reinvested it into the principal of the loan so that they have a a live version of an amortization schedule. And if they don't like it, I'll say, hey, get back to me with what you think you could put towards it. Because it's a living, it, they can continue to look at that link even after settlement. So it's just a way for me to stay in touch with them and say, hey, listen, we're not done. We're just getting started. Congratulations on knocking a whole bunch of interest off your loan, lowering your payment. Let's take a look at what would happen now if you took some of that money you were saving and reapplied it towards the principal and accelerated that balance. Smart. Great service. Uh, anyone listening to this, there are a lot of mortgage coaches, and we recommend it as a best practice that upon the close of escrow, 
that you do update the total cost analysis to achieve whatever the family's goal is. If it was a refi and paying it off faster, then do that. If it was a purchase and moving up to a bigger home or paying off MI, whatever that short-term and long-term goal is, update the total cost analysis, uh, kind of reset things once the loan is closed, and then at a minimum, do an annual review. And you know, there's a lot of loan officers that will do quarterly reviews, monthly reviews. There's a lot of loan officers and companies that have automated that with their CRM. You know, we integrate with a lot of great CRMs that will allow you to automate the annual reviews, but make, make sure you're delivering that service. Um, so let's go ahead and stop sharing your screen. This has been, um, I think everybody's got a couple ideas, a couple scripts. I, I'm curious, are you integrating Mortgage Coach as a value prop with your realtors? And if you are, how do you describe Mortgage Coach to an agent? Or when do you describe Mortgage Coach to an agent? Yeah, so when I'm, when I'm talking to my real estate agents about Mortgage Coach, I'm trying to create an opportunity for them to um, look for move up buyers, um, folks that might not understand how much equity they have in their home and could potentially be selling what they have now and, and buying something that's a little more expensive. Um, I've had a couple opportunities here over the last year where I've had people that once I've showed them the, the total cost analysis and the refinance wasn't something that was appealing to them, um, they didn't realize how much equity they were sitting on. And it, you'd be surprised, well, you wouldn't be surprised, but a lot of people would be surprised to know that most people don't understand how the equity in their home works. Um, so I've been using that as an opportunity to reach out to all my referral partners and just say, hey, listen, I've got a really slick tool here that we may be able to use to go back through some of the people that you worked with three, four, five, six years ago and present them with an opportunity to see what they might be able to qualify for now based on the equity they have in their home. And again, it's another opportunity for me to reach out to a realtor instead of just saying, don't forget, I can close a loan in 21 days. Don't forget that we have the lowest rates. You know, the things that you would have done when you were a loan originator, you no longer do as, as a mortgage coach. So I am seeing that strategy really pick up momentum in our community where loan officers are helping um, agents get move up listings. Uh, sometimes it's the, age, the agents bringing them in to do the move up TCA. Sometimes the loan officer is doing a refi <laughs> sorry, is doing a refi analysis and then they do a move up analysis. Uh, but I, I am seeing that trend big time. So what about cost of waiting? Are you, are you having many conversations where agents are, um, you know, you're helping create urgency for a buyer yeah. by doing a cost of waiting analysis? Well, if you want to have some fun with the cost of waiting analysis, it's always good. It's always good to do that for somebody that says, hey, I think I'm going to rent for a year and save some money. Because when you show somebody the enormous cost of waiting by paying rent to save money, you want to talk about an aha moment. You have to have a pillow on the floor under their chin when their face drops open. The amount of money that people waste on rent every year is unbelievable. And there's so many good loan programs out there right now that can get you into a home for so little cash that when you show them how much money they're paying in rent over the next 12 months that they'll never get back versus the slight appreciation that they're gonna see in that home that they've bought and the tax advantages to that home that they bought over the first 12 months, it's unbelievable. And then you stretch that out over two years and three years and five years. It really is motivating for people to go, you know what, I think I can save some money in the next six months and buy a house. Yeah, I don't know if you watched the recent modern uh, real estate summit. We already had a bunch of top realtors, but we also had some top mortgage professionals. And 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 this video right here, which has been watched 18 times, is like less than five minutes. Uh, and it talks about how Denise Donahue is blowing the minds of realtors with Mortgage Coach. Must watch it. Uh, Shayla Gifford did a six minute video. It's right here. Uh, where it's how she's helping realtors sell more homes with a cost of waiting. Uh, Justin Brown did the one that you just talked about. He talked about how he's using the rent versus own to get first time home buyers in the market. And then in literally four minutes and 17 seconds, uh, top black or not black belt, red belt mortgage coach, Amber Kovark, who 
closes over 40 loans a month, who's done over 3,000 TCAs. She shows how she's doing the move up analysis. So guys, this is four minutes, four minutes, six minutes, and five minutes. A total of 20 minutes, I would say, must watch content like today, because uh, it will really help you with how you're positioning mortgage coach with real estate agents. So Andy, have you by any chance seen any of those four videos that I just mentioned? I have not seen those, um, but I guarantee you I'll be on YouTube tonight watching those. Yeah, and, and you know, there's it's actually a playlist uh, it's called the Mortgage Coach Agent Advantage Playlist. And we made this to help mortgage coaches position themselves as a mortgage coach in a way that helps an agent sell more homes and in a way that they get more referrals from agents. So I would highly recommend, uh, you know, just watching all the videos of this playlist. Uh, it looks like there's about 13 of them. And they're all under five minutes. Maybe one is six minutes. And, and they're, they're just great, great things. If you want to use the fact that you're a mortgage coach as a value prop with your agents and you want to help your agents sell more homes, which I think most mortgage coaches do. So, so let's go into a wrap up. Any closing thoughts for anyone listening to this? Again, you've watched a lot of these interviews on YouTube. Yeah. You take an action. Any closing thoughts? I, I, I would say that if, if you've, if you've got access to mortgage coach, um, and you're not using it, there's gotta be a reason that you're not using it. Um, find somebody that can take the time to learn or help you learn how to use it. If you're self-taught like I am, go in there and create a total cost analysis that's completely relevant to your life. Whether you're renting, you own a home, put in all your debt, put in everything that's relevant to you and then just start playing around with it because when you play around with it and it's relevant to you, the changes will make sense immediately. Um, it's been a game changer for me, Dave. I, I, I can't tell you how powerful my business has become because of Mortgage Coach. There's a lot of tools in my business that I use all the time. I refuse to create a pre-qualification for someone without also attaching a total cost analysis to it that's ready to go when they find a house so that you're just, con I'm just continually the expert. I'm the person they come back to. Um, what do you think we should do with this? Well, what if we put this amount down? Um, and I've, I've said it to my boss, Sue, I've said it to anybody to listen. If it's me against somebody that doesn't have mortgage coach, I win every single time, every single time. Love it. Your unfair competitive advantage. And you guys heard it. So if you're an individual loan officer, first of all, if you don't have mortgage coach, go to our website, you can sign up online. It's $120 a month. If you're with one of the hundreds of clients and lenders that have mortgage coach as an enterprise, let your manager know. Uh, and, and if you're with a company and your management doesn't have it, tell them they need to. Uh, and then one last piece of advice I'd give folks is when you first get started with mortgage coach, I would, we're in a purchase market. So I'd go to some of my pre-approvals. Everybody's got a pre-approval funnel and you've got some buyers that are getting, you know, buyer fatigued. Uh, make a TCA for them. So you don't have to do it with that hot lead that you got today. Uh, and then go to your refis that are still in the money. There's some savings and show the savings over five years, and 10 years and use it to get some refis off the bed. So after you've done that about 10, 20 times, you're feeling comfortable and confident. Now you start using the mortgage coach for all your new hot leads. And, and it really is, it's a, it's a value to the consumer. It's, it's helping um, people become more financially literate. And, you know, so there's an educational element. And then of course, it's more valuable for you. You will have a higher conversion rate. You will have less price exceptions. And I don't care how successful you are. I don't care if you're closing a thousand loans a year right now, and you're one of the most iconic loan officers in the country, your conversion will go up. If you're, whatever you're doing today with a fee worksheet is 20% less than you could be doing if you just started using Mortgage Coach. So anything else you want to say before we wrap it? No, again, um, it's been a game changer and it's, it's, it's been great being on here with you. Um, if, if you're watching this and you have any doubts, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to Dave. If Dave wants to give out my contact information, I'll gladly talk to you, but you're, you're doing yourself a disservice if you have this and you're not using it. Well, hey man, you, you are a great leader in the mortgage industry. You're now a mortgage coach. 
and you're a brown belt. So that means to get to black belt, one, you've got to do 300 TCAs, and two, you've got to elevate other people. So hopefully you're mentoring um, some other loan officers in your branch or people that you are close with to get them to become mortgage coaches, because that's the deal, guys. The way you become the best of best at something, and this goes for anything, you get so good at it that you can lead, that you can coach, train, and lead others to do it. So, so if you're a brown belt, you want to get to black belt, you got to lead. And if you're a black belt or a red belt, you're, and you're listening to this, always be coaching or mentoring another loan officer on becoming a mortgage coach. Andy, you're awesome, brother. Appreciate you. Have a good one. Likewise. Uh, and audience, if you guys got any value, give this a like. Uh, share this with your mortgage friends, anyone that you think would get value. Take care, everybody.